The One Hour D7 is a very popular UV resin printer. Sold worldwide by One Hour from China, it has spawned a lot of clones and itself is not the first of its kind. This machine is very different to what people are used to with regards to FDM printers and comes with a steep learning curve. The technology, while it's established, does have some particular challenges. Today, we won't be covering the challenge of printing, but rather, and this goes some way towards elaborating on the learning curve, we'll be doing a post-print cleanup. You should watch some of my other videos to familiarize yourself with the printing tips. Also, it's worth mentioning that this resin is toxic and this is definitely not a printer for kids. So to start off with, resin is messy, and cleanup in particular can be very messy. You'll need to work on a suitable work area and wear suitable protection. I use this sheet of glass and putting it out in the sun will cure any resin spilt on there. I can then scrape it clean. For protective gear, gloves are usually efficient. Picking gloves comes down to two options, latex or nitrile. Latex gloves are usually the white ones, while nitrile is blue, but colors can vary there. The next notable thing is isopropyl alcohol, or IPA. This dissolves the resin and can be used for cleanup. If you get some on your skin, it'll dilute it, after which you should wash your hands thoroughly with water. IPA is highly flammable, enough so that I use it as a starting fluid and a generator. So, no open flames. The rest of my cleaning supplies include bulk paper towels, syringes, and opaque bottles. Now, onto the cleanup. The first thing is to move the bolt plate up. I use Nano DLP which moves to the top of the bolt plate after the print, but you can add G-code to your slicer or software that'll do that itself. Also, I've printed a few attachments to assist with cleanup. The first is this angled holder to hold the bolt plate and allow it to drip dry. This will let resin run off it and back into the vat. I will usually leave a print like this and if possible cover it again and leave it for anything from a few minutes to an hour to drip dry. After most of the resin has dripped off, it's time to remove the print from the plate. But as you can see, I don't have a print on this, it's just the cleanup. Getting the print off depends on the print. Pull it off, knock it off, use a scraper. Also, this depends on if you've sanded the build plate or not, as to how vigorous you can be with its removal. You can see a few scrapes on mine. That is from the scraper, and if you use a metal scraper, it will do that to the powder coated surface. To clean the build plate, I use a plastic container like this one, which is an ice cream tub with enough IPA to cover the build plate. I use old IPA to do this, usually something that's already been used to clean parts. I have a spare vat with old film that I also use, but a plastic tub is probably the better way to go here. I let it soak in there for a while, and then I start the cleanup of the vat and everything else while it's soaking. The vat I place on this holder and let it run down to one side. It is important to note that if the vat is full, it can overflow, so you might need to drain some off before you do this. I use this syringe with a large bore to draw the resin out of the vat. I then place used resin in an opaque bottle that will prevent it from curing in that bottle. I do this via this funnel, which I have some fine mesh in, the funnel is to filter out any gunk that's in the resin. I don't ever put used resin back into the original bottle to avoid contamination. I leave the resin to run down for as long as necessary to get as much of it out as possible. For the last bit, I use this container to let it drip straight into the bottle again. It is in your best interest to get as much of the resin out as possible. I usually clean up at the end of the day and I'll leave this overnight in the dark. I also have a second vat to use so that I can switch between the two while the first one is on here dripping clean. All of that done, you need to clean out any remaining resin from the vat. I don't like to use IPA to clean inside as it makes the FEP go milky and that results in bad prints. Whatever you do though, 
don't use a scraper as that will definitely mark or scratch or cut the FEP. Another very bad idea is to put the vat out in the sun to cure as the resin will cure solidly to the FEP and you're more likely to puncture the FEP when removing it. I know this because I tried it. I tried it so you don't have to. You're welcome. My method is to gently wipe any remains from the film with a paper towel to cause as little marring of the FEP as possible. I then wet the towel with IPA and clean the edges of the vat. It dries pretty quickly and I then wipe down the vat to get any fluff off leaving a clean vat ready to print again. Now the reason I do this is because any resin that remains in the vat will stay liquid and be absorbed into the next print. Now the build plate. This step may be done before the rest is done, but if you clean it and want to put it back on the printer, put some paper towel down as you'll see in a minute to cover the screen so anything you missed doesn't drip onto the LCD. The IPA should have cleaned out all the resin and after wiping it down with a paper towel, it should be cleaned off completely. Occasionally, you will dismantle the bed and clean all the components. But if you do, you're obviously going to have to re-level the bed again to make sure it's right. And that's just about it. I usually finish up by wiping down the printer with some IPA on, on a paper towel, as there may have been some resin that dripped onto it but avoid the labels, apparently the IPA can actually remove that. And then I basically put it together for the next print. I'll leave that paper towel underneath it sometimes, just to sort of protect the LCD a little bit as well. So there you have my procedure for cleaning the D7 printer. If you like this video, you know the drill. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.